Welcome to the Bakersfield City Council meeting. This television broadcast is brought to you by the local cable companies, the County of Kern and the City of Bakersfield. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 10 a.m., and the following Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can download the agenda for this meeting at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over this evening's meeting, the Honorable Mayor Karen K. Go. Good evening. It's my pleasure to call to order the 515 p.m. City Council meeting of April 8th, 2020. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Go. Here. Uh, Vice Mayor Parlier. Here. Councilmember Rivera. Councilmember Gonzalez. Here. Councilmember mm. Weir. Councilmember Smith. I am here. And Councilmember Freeman. Here. And Councilmember Sullivan. Here. Thank you. As many of you are aware, on March 4th, Governor Newsom declared a state of emergency in California due to, to the threat of COVID-19. The governor also passed several executive orders related to social distancing, shelter at home, and more. These orders also included the suspension of some components of the Brown Act related to public meetings like this one. And as such, Council Members Rivera, Weir, Smith, and Freeman are participating by phone. And we'll have an abbreviated meeting tonight with only essential items. All council votes tonight will be conducted by roll call. So at this time, would you all please stand, and I will lead us in the invocation, and then Vice Mayor, if you would lead us in the pledge, please. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can be still and know that you are God. Thank you that in quietness and confidence shall be our strength. And we just thank you that in the midst of all the turmoil and all the noise out there, that we can acknowledge that we will come together and trust in you as the one who is in charge of everything. And thank you that we can put our faith and our hope and our confidence in you. Thank you for this opportunity to be together tonight to do the people's business. And we just pray that you would give each of us wisdom, give us that clarity of thinking as we make these decisions. And we pray for all of those in our community at this point who are anxious, those who are hurting, and we just pray that you would calm their anxiety, that you would heal the brokenhearted, and we pray for all of those who are either suffering from the virus or families who have lost loved ones, and we just pray that you would be their strength. Thank you that we can look to you this evening, and we just pray this in your precious name. Amen. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and you may be seated. Before we begin with the substantive agenda items, we need to address a possible add-on to the agenda. Specifically, staff is requesting we add a resolution authorizing the city manager and finance director to provide fee deferrals and other economic relief from the effects of COVID-19. So if council permits, this resolution would be added to the consent calendar as item 8 AE for council consideration. In order for this resolution to be added, we need a motion that we are in an emergency situation due to COVID-19, and then adding the item to the agenda requires a majority vote of the city council. So Vice Mayor, may I have a motion determining that an emergency situation exists and to add this item to the agenda? So moved, item eight, E's and Edward as an addendum. Thank you, so uh, at this point, roll call, Madam Clerk. You have a motion. Vice Mayor Parlier. Aye. Councilmember Rivera. Aye. Councilmember Gonzalez. Aye. Councilmember Weir. 
Councilmember Smith? Yes. Councilmember Freeman? Aye. And Councilmember Sullivan? Aye. Motion is approved with Councilmember Weir absent. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk, would you please read the first item? Public statements. And do we have any tonight? We do. We have received um, public statements and they've been provided to the council as blue memos. Additional comments received during the meeting will be provided to the council and made part of the permanent record at the conclusion of the meeting. We have also received one speaker card with the first public speaker being Curtis Bingham. Thank you very much. So now is the time that we're going to accept verbal comments and we will then call in each of you one at a time. Thank you for all of you who are participating out there in the lobby. If you're here on consent calendar public hearing items 9A through 9F, now isn't the time to speak. You'll be given an opportunity when that, those items are called later in the meeting. So just please remain in the lobby and follow the six foot social distancing guidelines until the consent calendar public hearing items are called. So Madam Clerk, who's the first person in the lobby who's gonna be coming forward? Curtis Bingham. Thank you. Mr. Bingham? Welcome, Mr. Bingham. Uh, yes, to the Honorable Mayor and our Honorable Board. Uh, my name is Curtis James Bingham, Sr., uh, servant of our Lord and Savior, God Almighty, Jesus Christ, who truly is the only begotten Son of our Holy Heavenly Father, God Almighty. You know, the Lord tells us to always bless our leaders, and that happened to be you. And the Lord would just, would like to say, with this time that's going on that's confusing a lot of people, and for those that believe, the Lord would say, uh, when we leave here, he said, if we do good, we come home to heaven, but if we don't, we can't go to hell in the lake of fire. So if the Lord was to let us go, and many people were to leave earth today, would it be better to go to a lake of fire forever and ever? Or would it be better to allow something like this that's happening now? Which will be better? And the Lord know you wise enough, though that believe to see what's better. The lake of fire is forever. And it's no play thing, it's real. So this thing that's taking place, the Lord don't want you to let it bother you that much because he know what he's doing. I also would like to say congratulations again to you, Mayor. You should be able to be mayor as long as you see fit. And I'll take this time too as to our new city manager. Uh, thank you for picking us. They hired you, but you picked us. And we thank you for filling the spot. And I pray you be blessed because you would have blessed a team up here. You know, and so I just want to say thank you for picking Bakersfield, coming down here to be a servant. I also like to just say to the board, board uh, is that you've always done right. Every time I've been coming down here, y'all were doing right. There's a lot of people you have helped. You stuck by law enforcement, which you know I represent greatly because you can't do none of your town without them. And they've asked for this and asked for that, and you've always been there. And the Lord seemed fit to bless you with funds to do even more. And so look what's happening now. They got a new building. We got new officers coming in. Uh, you got to have that no matter what you build or who's working. If you can't protect it out there, you don't have anything. And so because of you guys supporting them as you have did, look at the, the fruits that you're reaping from them. When well, we got more officers coming, because the more officers you see, the happier the people are, the safer we are. So I want to thank you guys for always supporting them. And then the Lord tell us that the poor shall always be with us. And you're taking time out to rush immediately to build them a place they're going to be able to go to. And then you got additional funds going out to these shelters trying to help the people. And so the Lord just want to thank you for having a great consideration speedily to help the situation out there. There ain't nothing came through here you guys ain't been able to handle. And you're done at fair and square. So the Lord want to thank you for that. And so far as the virus is concerned, the Lord would have you to know he has selected Bakersfield. You're not going to see very many uh, deaths here from it. Don't worry about what I'm saying. Just watch the Lord's work. Uh, you're not going to have very many from it. Uh, there's a lot of people here that believe in the Lord, and so the medicine is God Almighty Jesus Christ. People need to pray his name 
to our Holy Heavenly Father, God Almighty. That's the greatest medicine there is if somebody has faith. The same person you see sending down the rain right now, you know it's not the water company. It's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that's alive, and we should all be able to see that. That's the one we need to go to because he's the one that allows certain things. And I pray God bless you guys. Have faith. The Lord is depending on you guys. You've been doing excellent. You guys are our leaders. I love you guys, and I pray God keep blessing you. To our city manager, I'll say again to you, thank you for selecting us. You know, you're in a beautiful position, uh, beautiful things that's happened there. And so thank you for selecting us. Thank you, Mr. Pray God bless you. Thank you, Honorable Mayor. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, if there are no other speakers, next item, please. Consent calendar items 8A through 8AE for approval. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Does any council member wish to recuse themselves from an item? Does any council member wish to remove a consent calendar item for separate consideration? I make a motion that we approve consent calendar items 8A through 8AE as in Edward, along with the noted agenda corrections by the city clerk. Thank you. So, Madam Clerk, we now have a motion. Would you please call the roll? Vice Mayor Parlier? Aye. Councilmember Rivera? Aye. Councilmember Gonzalez? Aye. Councilmember Weir? Aye. Councilmember Smith? Yes. Councilmember Freeman? Aye. And Councilmember Sullivan? Aye. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. Next item, please. Consent calendar hearing items 9A through 9F for approval. We've received a staff memorandum for item 9D, transmitting correspondence received and staff's response. Thank you. The purpose of this section is to vote on all of the items listed under consent calendar hearing in one motion without further comment. If anyone would like to speak on any of the hearing items listed, the item must be removed from this portion of the agenda. If an item is removed, it will be placed at the end of the regular public hearings portion of the meeting. So at this time, I'll open consent calendar public hearing items 9A through 9F. So is there anyone in the lobby who would like to request that a hearing item be removed from the consent calendar? Ms. Lena is going back to check on that. This isn't the time to take testimony, only to remove the matter from consent calendar hearings. Thank you. So we have no one uh, in the lobby who wishes to remove. Does any council member wish to remove an item from the consent calendar hearings? Seeing none, at this time, consent calendar public hearing items 9A through 9F are now closed. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Make a motion that we, are we gonna take it in one fell swoop or should we take, okay. Make a motion that we take consent calendar public hearing items 9A through 9F. Thank you. So you have a motion. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Aye. Councilmember Rivera? Aye. Councilmember Gonzalez? Aye. Councilmember Weir? Aye. Councilmember Smith? Yes. Councilmember Freeman? Aye. And Councilmember Sullivan? Aye. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. Next item, please. Council and Mayor's statements. Thank you, colleagues. Is there anybody who wishes to make a comment? Uh, I, this is uh, Councilmember Freeman. I would. Councilmember Freeman, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'd like to uh, direct staff to bring a recommendation to the Planning and Development Committee uh, for a policy on how to split construction costs and maintenance costs uh, for, for shared drainage sums 
when they're shared by private entities and public entities. Um, rather than dealing with that on a case by case, it'd be nice to have a written policy. So I was hoping you could bring to a recommended policy to the Planning and Development Committee. Thank you, and I see our city manager is nodding his head. Would you like to? Okay. Uh, uh, yes. I have one other comment, <clears throat> and this is to ask if staff <clears throat> uh, could make an attempt at a reforecast of the next 12 months of um, revenues into the city, into the general fund from you know tax receipts, property tax, sales tax, other fees. Um, uh, perhaps, if possible, by a month, I think a meeting a month from now, and also to have looked at capital expenditure items that will take place certainly over the next 90 to days to six months. And just as a first cut, are there any things that we should at least as a council look at deferring to the future capital items um, based on what your new forecast of receipts will be? I know it's quick and dirty, but it's probably time for us to look at what our expectation is of revenues coming into the city. So if that can be done, uh, by our next meeting to give us some some general idea, um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Clay, would you like to respond to that? Yes, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council Member, for the comment. Uh, the city's revenue forecasts are of keen interest to staff given the changing economy. And so, as you can probably appreciate, it's been a little bit of a moving target with each new update that's come from the state about how they're handling these issues. But our, we, our, we already have a plan in place to come on May 6th with a high level uh, look for uh, the city council um, to then feed into the budget process through uh, May and June. So yes, we will come on May 6th with a projection update. Thank you, Mr. Clegg. I see we have two requests to speak from those in the chamber. Council Member Sullivan first. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Well, I just want to uh, commend our community for the, the uh, cooperation and uh, just the spirit of, of just working together the best way possible. I know this, is, this time is much more difficult for some than others, but we have a spirit of, of just getting, being determined to get through this, and the city staff is doing a great job keeping the council members informed and uh, we're just carrying on following through the best way possible so you know this too shall pass and and uh, so we we're Americans and we're determined and we will just continue doing our best thank you mayor thank you council member Sullivan council member Gonzalez thank you mayor uh, you know the Trump administration is um, talking publicly about a possible uh, another possible stimulus package that will focus on infrastructure. And I wondered if uh, staff would be good enough to provide the council a list of shovel-ready projects, ER, EIR-ready projects, other projects in the pipeline that might qualify for federal funding so that council members can um, have conversations with our congressional representatives and help um, get those projects funded and, and work on, uh, you know, getting uh, getting additional funding should that package go through Congress and, and be approved. Mr. Clegg? Yes, absolutely. Council member will put that list together and this is consistent with some of my thinking about how we can continue to raise our uh, efforts around legislative advocacy and many cities will have a major infrastructure uh, ready list as well as a wish list that are accompanying their legislative platforms each year mm -hmm. and so this will be a good springboard to get us ready for that for next year by uh, working on this now good and my second comment if I may mayor is to echo the comments by council member Sullivan and just to thank city staff and all their great work uh, throughout this uh, public health crisis in particular I'd like to thank um, the men and women of our police department and fire department who are on the front lines protecting our community every single day and putting themselves at risk, um, but doing so to, to protect our community. And so 
just a big thank you to everyone in every single department who continues to show up and to do the city business and keep our city running. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gonzalez. Colleagues who are on the phone, does anyone wish to offer a comment? I don't hear that anybody does. Thank you to all of the public. We know that in a city of this size, uh, the majority of our public, you all are complying with the directives and following the guidelines. So thank you so much. We do hear uh, about some who are choosing not to comply, and we would continue to say it is imperative that you do so. Observe social distancing. It is for your family, for your friends, and for our community. Social distancing, frequent hand washing, and as we are about to approach this Easter weekend, our parks, facilities, and amenities, including restrooms, will be closed. And so we are uh, strongly recommending that you stay at home, have a wonderful time with your family. And when we say family, we're talking about your household, not inviting your distant aunts and uncles who live across town to join you, but your household. Have a wonderful time. Let's be creative in celebrating this season of joy, the season of hope, and this new season of life. And so thank you all so very much. And before we close the meeting, I'd like to just offer uh, a moment of silence. Let's have a moment of silence together for those who are ill and for those who have lost loved ones. And then I will close this out with the adjournment. Thank you. This meeting is now adjourned at 537. Thank you all. to the special meeting of the Bakersfield City Council. Now speaking, the Honorable Mayor Karen K. Go. Good afternoon, it's my pleasure to call to order the 4.15 p.m. City Council meeting of April 8th, 2020. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Go. Here. Vice Mayor Parlier. Here. Council Member Rivera. Here. Councilmember Gonzalez. Councilmember Weir. Here. Councilmember Smith. I am here. Councilmember Freeman. Here. And Councilmember Sullivan. Here. Thank you. As many of you are aware, on March 4th, Governor Newsom declared a state of emergency in California due 
to the threat of COVID-19. The governor also passed several executive orders related to social distancing, shelter at home practices, and more. These orders also included the suspension of some components of the Brown Act related to public meetings like this one. And as such, council members Rivera, Weir, Smith, and Freeman are participating by phone. We'll have an abbreviated meeting with only essential items and all council votes tonight will be taken by roll call. Now is the time that we would usually accept verbal public comments, but due to the governor's executive order, which waived the Brown Act provisions requiring physical distancing, uh, COVID-19 pen, uh, that doesn't make any sense there. So let's just uh, talk normally, okay? So uh, we, at this point, uh, are going to ask the city clerk whether any public comments have been received. City clerk, uh, Madam Clerk, any public comments? No public comments for the 415 agenda. All right, so no public comments. So Madam Clerk, the next item, please. Under workshops, we have a workshop and progress update on affordable housing projects. Welcome, Mr. Boyle. It's a pleasure to be here, Madam Mayor. And it has been quite a journey in bringing this affordable housing workshop to the body of the council for your digestion. I think uh, our last um, visit to affordable housing occurred back in December, and I was here a total of one week, I believe it was my introductory week. And um, since that time, we've been anxiously trying to bring additional information to you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, this workshop will be broken up into three components. The first component will be a look at the annual housing progress report. The second component will be a status on the affordable housing projects that um, you have seen um, glimmers and glimpses of over the past five months. And uh, then the last will be a look at some of the council referrals with questions that were related to affordable housing. Let's first take a look at uh, the annual housing report. You might recall that it was a part of your agenda last council meeting on the 25th, and I believe the council received and filed that report. Um, we use this as, a, as an introductory component because we really didn't have an opportunity to talk too much about it, um, but the report, as it shows in this graphic, did not provide for many additional affordable housing units being brought into the city during um, the 2009 calendar year. Uh, the highlight there would be that uh, our arena number, our regional housing needs allocation for the entire um, um, a housing element window would be 36,290 units. And to date, we provided just shy of 10,000 of those units. Um, also, as a part of that, um, that uh, meeting last uh, on the 25th, we incorporated a one comment letter um, and uh, that uh, had comments as related to table D and table D provides a progress report on the status of housing related goals and uh, the comment letter um, had specific concerns as it related to our progress on those. Um, I would note that ordinance specific to satisfying those goals will be coming to the council in the very near future, currently with the city attorney's office. Let's move on to our second part, the current home projects or, or affordable housing projects. The first component of that would be our home investment partnership program. And we currently have three projects that are utilizing home dollars in bringing about affordable housing. The first one would be the residences at East Hills um, council increased funding on that project by $500,000 um, recently in January 2020. And that project is actually in plan check. We have a little bit of a hurdle to overcome in that the bids for that project came in a little high and we're exploring ways to close that funding gap as we're going through that plan check process. That would provide for 81 units and the total cost is just over $23 million total. Our second home funded project would be Brentwood Crossing, sometimes called Danco. That's a 58 unit project and the council committed $1.2 million in home funds also during that January 2020 uh, public hearing. Um, that project is currently uh, applying for tax credit financing 
and the total cost of that is somewhere close to $25.5 million. The third home project would be the 22nd Street Lofts and uh, that particular project is uh, on your agenda tonight where uh, staff is shifting an additional $99,000 in NSP, uh, the Neighborhood Stabilization Program funds um, from the 2008 real estate crisis. Uh, and uh, that will provide for a total of about $1.3, $1.4 million in uh, total commitment in home funds to that particular project. That's 20 units um, with a total cost of about $5.7 million. We also have uh, projects associated with uh, public, public safety and vital services measure, measure N, and, um, and there were monies dedicated within fiscal year 1920 to provide for um, assistance in funding additional affordable housing projects. And the, the city conducted um, a call for projects, which was included, concluded on November 21st of last year. And we rated and scaled 12 applications. And also on tonight's agenda, um, we uh, provide a funding commitment that the council can digest for um, the successful candidate, which would be the Housing Authority's Infill Affordable Housing Program. That would be a $1.7 million commitment for 28 units of development. Um, here's a little sneak peek. There's actually a prototype of um, this project um, built. This is on Orange Street. Um, and uh, this would allow for the repetition of this where we're bringing infill projects into the community um, that are for low and very low income um, residents and uh, four, fourplexes. Now, what does that look like to the annual report? Well, if you look at the table up above with the four projects, you can see that there is a, a significant um, increase in the amount of um, low and very low um, units within these eight projects. And if you look at how that impacts the table for the annual report for next year, already we can see that um, we haven't seen those kinds of numbers in some time. Um, cumulatively, for the four projects, we're providing for almost as many units as have been provided in the last five years combined. So we're excited about um, the energy and momentum that um, the newly created Economic and Community Development Division is putting into providing additional affordable housing within the community using all the resources that are available to them. Um, another another uh, topic as it relates to affordable housing would be our SP2 grant. Um, that's a planning grant that um, we successfully were awarded $625,000 by the state with the specific goal of developing a five-year plan to increase funding capacity and streamlining and, and efforts towards streamlining affordable housing development, um, very topical in these times. And the city was tasked with developing uh, a strategy for implementing uh, a permanent local housing allocation, which would be an annual funding source that would come from the state. Um, the key project deliverables in providing for a permanent local housing allocation would be um, an updated housing inventory with identification of potential affordable housing sites. Um, that is to get out there and find those properties that are best suited for affordable housing projects. Uh, another one would be the creation of dedicated fund and incentive program to accelerate affordable housing production. And that's seen in three different ways. The first way is by the creation of affordable housing trust fund. Um, this trust fund would allow the city to leverage various funding sources for new affordable housing units and um, including the city's upcoming permanent local housing allocation. The second component would be a developer fee assistance program and that would help offset the cost of developer impact fees. Um, the city could provide a grant to housing projects for affordable to moderate to low to very low um, incomes. The third would be an affordable ADU incentive program, and this would allow the city to develop pre-approved architectural designs and site plan layouts for streamlined ADU development. It, it kind of mimics the award-winning City of Clovis 
um, cottage home program, but uh, we'd like to think in Bakersfield, we'll just make it one step a little better. And um, that program provided for incentives where there were pre-approved plans um, that um, the cost for those plans were, were free. You could come in and pull one of those. And so the plan check cost for those plans was also complimentary. We're hoping that with the other components uh, um, that are proposed within our um, SP2 grant that will perhaps be able to incentivize um, grants for the actual building permit cost itself on top of that plan check. And perhaps some of the developer impact fee could also be a component um, within uh, the, um, the potential grants that we could provide through, our, through the funding streams that we're gonna create with um, SB2 monies. Now, we talked just briefly about the permanent lo local housing allocation. Let's uh, delve just a little bit deeper in that. Um, it was created by SB2, and it funds a permanent annual allocation of funding to eligible local governments uh, this year. Um, the city will be awarded $1.7 million, and uh, we're currently um, uh, in the, the process of submitting applications for um, those dollars, and we expect awards uh, late summer of 2020. The last component of tonight's workshop would be a look at council referrals. Um, over the last month, we've, we've taken in questions from various council members and we'd like to take an opportunity to respond formally to them. The first referral comes from council member Rivera who asked us to explore the feasibility of further rebating developer, development fees for affordable housing project in Bakersfield's core, also allowing lower development fees outside the central core. Um, the city, city staff would respond by saying that lower impact fees would, would require an updated nexus analysis for the metropolitan Bakersfield Transportation Impact Fee Program showing that affordable housing does not have the same impact on traffic and roads as market rate development. Um, that analysis hasn't been completed and I'm not certain whether a nexus can be made, um, but per council direction, um, staff could entertain um, going through that analysis. Also, it would require modification of the general plan policy number 39, which would be required. And policy 39 requires new development to pay or participate in a pro rata share of the costs in area-wide transportation facilities and services. These are both long-term um, heavy lifts that the council would um, have to entertain um, as an alternative staff might provide some immediate short-term relief. And our, those options would be to, number one, um, we, we, um, we currently were tasked um, with the creation of an economic opportunity area plan. And uh, staff has that in draft form right now. That plan um, could be uh, altered to include affordable housing projects. Right now, the plan only addresses projects that promote business retention and expansion. So it is an economic development tool. It could be altered to become an affordable housing tool at the same time with the same sort of strategy where one applies for an economic opportunity area grant and um, goes through an application process to be awarded that. Uh, the other opportunity, um, was discussed earlier in our workshop here where SB2 provides for developer fee assistant program um, and that could pay those impact fees because the purpose of that developer fee assistant program is to help offset the cost of development imp impact fees. So we're, we're actively looking to um, use that SB2 planning grant to create uh, pathways to um, solve some of those funding issues that come with affordable housing. A second referral was from Council Member Rivera, who um, asked us to explore the, explore the feasibility of the city to further fund housing vouchers. Um, staff's response would be that the city doesn't actually fund the housing vouchers. The, it's a federal program and currently administered by the Housing Authority, but the city 
can help support the program, the housing voucher program, via the ADU incentive program that we're, we're going to be establishing via SB2. And the city could also allocate a portion of its home funds to tenant-based rental assistance programs, which would be a direct assistance to the voucher program. Council Member Sith asked to push vouchers in the direction of ADUs and um, we're actively creating strategies within our SB2 planning grant, um, which will go to, go to RFP soon. I know that um, economic development staff is currently working on a release of that RFP. And um, with those programs being implemented, then we'd have a strategy in hand where um, we could uh, hopefully accelerate the development of ADUs and to also be able to um, partner those ADUs with um, housing vouchers. Council Member Rivera also asked to explore using vacant residential lots to remove barriers for private investors um, and he had not seen the city pick up additional vacant residential lots and turn them to groups looking to build homes. And that was a, a typical of the city's RDA that had an, a Southeast Bakersfield re revitalization strategy and um, that approach to um, providing additional lands for affordable housing has not been entertained since the RDA was dissolved by the state. But our PSVS supported um, infill affordable housing program does partially use those some of those former RDA parcels that were still in the city's inventory and in in providing those additional um, low and very low income units. Also the SP2 planning grant would include updates to the affordable housing opportunity site so we might have a tool to identify specific properties that are uh, optimally positioned to provide for additional affordable housing. So um, we can look at uh, analysis of factors that make properties attractive for affordable housing project. So in essence, the current development services efforts are developing strategies to provide resources that work towards addressing those council concerns, as opposed to taking that, that heavy lift in terms of altering um, the general plan or um, completing a nexus studies for the reduction of uh, transportation impact fees. Um, we're looking to create pathways using home funds, uh, PSVS funds, the SB2 program, and perhaps uh, with council direction, the economic opportunity area program funding to provide for solutions that would enhance affordable housing in the city. That completes my presentation. I'd be happy to an an answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Boyle. Madam Clerk, have we received any public comments regarding this item? We have not. Thank you. And then colleagues uh, here in the chambers, uh, I don't see any lights there. And then how about our colleagues who are on the phone? Is there anybody who wishes to ask a question or make a comment? Yes, Council Member Smith here. I, I have a couple comments. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on the ADUs, you talked about the uh, standard plan, uh, and that's great. I, I would also I would also like to see if we had some standard details. Each site is different, and you know, in the architecture is different. Maybe the standard plans don't work, but if we have standard details that regular folks can put together and then create their own site plan and their own floor plan to make it work, I think would also be helpful. Thank you, Council Member Smith. Number, number two, uh, on also on the ADUs, I've seen other cities do uh, a grant, you know, very per city, I think LA is up to 75 grand, but I've seen other cities 10,000 to 20,000 uh, if you do a X year, a 10 year affordable covenant, uh, and then you would grant the homeowner uh, X dollars. Uh, we looked at a program like that. Um, 
If the answer is, if the question is, have we looked at a program like that? Yes, very specifically using, using um, the SB, the tools that will be created with SB2, using those to uh, provide for grants for um, the affordable housing, pro the ADU program, yes. Council Member okay, Smith, so anything further? It would further? include an affordable covenant and, and you could give a grant through the SB2 or something like that? Exactly. Yes, sir. Okay, great. That's all my comments. Thank you, Council Member Smith. Anyone else who is on the phone uh, with questions or comments? Seeing none, Vice Mayor. Motion to receive and file. You have a motion. Uh, we're going to do this by roll call. Vice Mayor Parlier. Aye. Council Member Rivera. Aye. Council Member Gonzalez. Aye. Good job. Council Member Weir. Yay. Aye. Whatever. Council Member Smith. Yes. Council Member Freeman. Aye. And Council Member Sullivan. Aye. The motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. And that concludes our agenda. We stand adjourned at 437.